one key thing I think is to listen, to listen to the spouse, to listen to know what she needs. I think that's very, very important because if both are angry and started talking, then no one is listening. Welcome to the Connect to Marriage podcast by Focus on the Family Singapore. I am Delia and I am your host for this episode. In each episode of the Connect to podcast, we'll be tackling questions that couples ask about marriage, communication, conflict and so much more. We hope you will keep tuning in to learn with us as you grow closer, deeper and stronger in your marriage. It is not uncommon to find two very different individuals coming together in marriage. And today we return to part two of this series on when two worlds collide. In particular, we will dive deeper into the topic of managing differences in the context of marriage. Imagine a marriage where personality or value differences are not suppressed but celebrated and where each partner's unique perspective is valued and appreciated. Can such a scenario exist in real life? To help us unpack this topic, we chat with a couple who's like chalk and cheese. Dennis is a full-time ministry staff and Shirin is in the financial services. Hi, Dennis and Shirin, welcome back to the Connect2 podcast. Hello. You've been married for one year and nine months, so... Mm -hmm. This is often coined as the honeymoon phase for a married couple. So share with us one highlight or memory that you have from your married life thus far. Something very memorable is uh, the second day of our marriage. So it was people always say it's like honeymoon period. But in fact, we have one of our greatest argument or quarrel on our second day of marriage. And right now, we can't even remember what actually happened. <laughs> yeah, some but, stupid thing yes, I quarrel. <laughs> we realised that in marriage, beside the lovey-dovey feelings, right, there are times when we will be very frustrated with each other, very angry with each other, but then we learn how to exhibit self-control and how to respond to each other with respect. And I think that's very, very important in marriage. That's like highlight. <laughs> highlight, yeah. Yeah, the highlight is we, we got over it. Yeah. For me, I think uh, over this one year plus, Dennis actually went through a few health challenges. So a few months before we got married, he went for a surgery and it took him about three months to three recover. Months. After we got married, he went for a second surgery and again, it took him about, th I think even longer, three, four months to recover. I wouldn't say that this is like, wow, I'm so happy about it, it's a highlight, highlight. But I think we think about it from the perspective of what made us grow through the seasons of marriage. Mm. I think that this helped me to have this empathy, empathy for couples or rather family members who are physically and you know not doing so well and also have a, a perspective of what it means to be a caregiver. I think a bit deeper, right? So I was thinking, oh, wow, you know, like when we hit the, the age of 60, 70, 80, that's the point where... <laughs> You know, health will start to be challenging and this is like a glimpse as to how we need to know how to navigate, how to be there for each other when the time calls for it, to be able to put down other things with confidence that you can still take them up like work at a later time. So that for me was a highlight in mm. terms of my personal growth, of course, in the level of patience. Wow, you yeah. guys really had the opportunity to live out and model your marriage vow to one another, you know, for better or worse, and in sickness yeah. and in health, immediately in your first one year plus yeah. of your marriage. And yeah. it is an encouragement though, because I hear you're sharing from a place of growth and really just recognising that it's not just about your individual lives now, but the yeah. coming together of your lives. Drawing back to our conversation in the previous episode, you know, you shared the differences you observed in one another during your dating phase. And I wonder, how have these differences played out now that you are a married couple? Before we got married, when we have differences, and because we were in a girlfriend-boyfriend phase, right, it's very easy for a man to give in and say, oh, okay, I'm sorry, you know, because the man is the one pursuing, right? So it's very easy because you want to please your girlfriend. But when you got married, then it's like angry and you still need to face her. It's not like over the phone, you can just please her. It's like you need to you look at her, her face, her angry face, and yet you're also feeling angry, right? And so I think we learned a lot about each other when we get angry, when we have different thoughts or when we are in a conflict and how we sort things out. 
So the part on how to communicate well really intensifies when you're married. You have nowhere to run. Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, literally. And you can't say, oh, I, I want to put out the phone now. There's no yeah. phone, you know. You are, you're facing the issue there and then. And there's a lot of emotions that is involved. And you know that you're married already. You cannot call it quits, you know. And it, not like boyfriend, girlfriend. Oh, yeah, I don't want to talk to you for the next one month. No, in the marriage, you have to find a way to navigate and make communication more and more effective. So if I were to say that, Communication would be the one key tool that married couples need to master in their marriage. Talk us through, you know, how does this look like in terms of practicing, you know, the effective communication? Because mm -hmm. even as we hear you speak, we could tell that both of you might also have quite different communication preferences or mm -hmm. maybe even the way that you process your thoughts before communicating. Yeah, so maybe if you could share an example of a conflict that you faced and then how did that work out for you guys? Say, for example, if we were in an argument now and then we start to quarrel for myself i will want to sort out the differences now immediately let's settle it now why aren't you talking right why do we even need to get angry although i'm feeling very angry but i would think why do we need to get angry and insist on wanting to settle it now so that's when things get very difficult because for her she needs to calm down she needs to process she needs to come to an agreement with her emotions to know that okay yeah. it's time to settle so for me i'm more anxious about this and so initially it was very very difficult the more we try to settle the worse it becomes yeah. so i think over the many times we have quarreled and argued we got better practice makes perfect Correct. and uh, one one key thing I think is to listen, to listen to the spouse, to listen to know what she needs. I think that's very, very important because if both are angry and started talking, then no one is listening. And I think as a man, we will listen and then we must give the wife the space for her to do what she wants. Because I think men, we are called to love, to love our wife, right? We pursue them and then we love them. And I think love also comprises of listening what she really wants. I think even when we are quarreling, there shouldn't be an excuse lah, not mm. to listen. So like between myself and Dennis, Dennis is the more emotional one, which means that we don't see it in the bad light. We see it in the way how a person processes things, right? Yeah. So he processes things through his heart first, through how he feels first, whereas I process things through my brain. And, you know, I analyze the situation. I find out what is the problem. I produce the solution. <laughs> so step one, step two, step three, this is what we need to do. That for him, he needs that space to express how he felt about the situation, how he mm. felt about me. In the midst of that expression, there is, you know, volume will go up and then, you know, there will be hand gesturing and all that, which at first I was like, oh, I'm shocked, you know, like, oh my goodness, why are you screaming at me? <laughs> well, we just married. Why are you shouting at me? Why are you gesturing at me so violently? And then that's where the whole volcano starts to erupt because I'm not someone who will face conflict in a very outward manner like him. So that's where we had to talk about this after the conflict mm. to process together that I would tell him, you know, when you're emotional like that, I feel very intimidated. I feel very angry, even more angry. So how can we prevent this from happening the next time? Because I know you are upset with me because I'm quiet, but I'm quiet because you are shouting at me. So it's something that is working against each other. Mm -hmm. After many, many practices, we kind of got it that we don't react but we respond instead in the midst of a conflict and uh, he will know that I will shut down if I'm shouted at or when he is overly expressive and I know that he needs me to be present he needs to feel that I'm present in the conversation and not shutting down so we have to be very mindful. I say it's very mindful to make sure we don't step on each other's toes unnecessarily like that. Mm. We don't press each other's sore buttons uh, unnecessary. Mm. So that's how we have learned to better our conflict management. If I could just refer back to what we spoke about in the previous episode, right? You talked about transparency, mm. trust, honesty. And I felt like, you know, whatever you have just shared was built 
build upon that foundation of just mm. that open communication and trust for each other that you know hey we're on the same team and actually even as we have this conflict right now these differences to resolve right now his behaviour of you know being more expressive and then her behaviour of just like you know quietening down because she's processing in her head. the RAM is actually moving very fast <laughs> uh, the brain it is not that they are turning away from each other right yeah. but actually it's in that moment I am processing in the way that I need to and I hear you share you know very candidly that it really required a lot of practice just that mindfulness to say that in this moment for example Shireen says that she needs to calm down in order to respond but at the same time it sounds like if Shireen chooses to shut herself away then that mm. will actually make Dennis even more like yeah. upset mm. Wow, I think it really required quite a bit of communication, sharing with each other how you honestly felt in a moment in order for you to come to this point in time mm. where you can agree that, okay, if this thing happens again, this disagreement happens again, we know how to better respond to each other. Let's say there are some couples who are facing these tensions, right, in their relationship. Is there a practical tip that you can share with them? Marriage is one of the most rewarding things in life. Yet, navigating marriage as newlyweds or an engaged couple can sometimes get overwhelming. Whether it's managing expectations of the in-laws, getting a good grasp of your family finances, or establishing good habits of communication and healthy conflict. Focus on the Family Singapore's Marriage Preparation Program aims to help you build a solid foundation in the early years and prepare you for the adventure of your life. Visit family.org.sg slash C2 Marriage Prep for more information today. I think a lot of quarrels can be avoided. Serious mm. quarrels can be avoided. I mean, we do quarrel about silly things also. And we just get irritated with each other for no reason. <laughs> One thing I really appreciate about Dennis is that how he adds to the marriage is that he's more lighthearted. I, like he said just before that I'm the more serious one. So he can shift the atmosphere with making it funny. Like he will shift the atmosphere and jibe at me and say, hey, why are you so irritable today? And immediately I feel that, okay, yeah, I, I need to shift my attitude here. So I think the partnership is that we, we, we sense that the other party is going down the slippery slope already, right? Of uh, being irritable and wanting to quarrel. Then the stronger side will have to lift the whole atmosphere up and say mm. that, hey, you know, don't need to be so serious about this. You know, let's find something funny about this to, to talk about. Let's lighten mm. up the mood mm. here. So yeah. that helps me a lot because I'm the more serious person. Mm. Yeah, I think especially if both working, you know, stress, pressure from work and then at the end of the day at home, sometimes you expect the other party to understand you, to listen to you. I agree, but I think, as I said before, I think men should take the lead because we are men. We take the lead in loving our wives, we take the lead in listening to them. And like what Shirin said, I think men should be able to shift the atmosphere, to shift that serious atmosphere or to be able to bring your wife into... Back on track. Yes, to make her happy. Just simple, silly jokes sometimes help in lightening the whole yeah. situation. I mean, of course, like she said, when we quarrel, I'm loud, right? But then there are times when if she were to hint or she were to signal that I'm loud, then I will like, okay, then I will just like tune my own volume down mm. and it just lighten up the whole room, you know. So I think between couples, there's nothing so serious until that we are totally against each other. Mm. In fact, two to become one, right? Yeah. And so we are actually one and we need mm. to work towards this oneness because it's no longer about her or no longer about myself, but yeah. it's the both of us coming together as one, a family, you know, how we can make it better for each other. And I think men should take the lead. Yeah. If I may just add on, I mean, yeah. maybe some of our, you know, audience here have been married for a long time and we'll, we'll only be married for one year plus, right? Nine mm. months. And you might be thinking, oh my, you know, our communication has gone totally haywire after so many years. Mm. But, you know, I just want to encourage whoever is listening that if it has come to a point where there's a coldness, right, in terms of communication, mm. remember the time that when you first got married. Remember that chemistry you once had. Remember that fun, you know, in communication you once had. And know that you can work your way back. 
to that place because that was where you first knew each other as who you were. Surely, you know, things along the way might cause communication to break down or for each other to be shut down to each other. If we are in a marriage, we must remember that from the first day when we fell in love with each other, that friendship is so important. That friendship is so valuable. It is possible to work back to that place where you can talk to one another, have fun with one another again, mm. openly, you know, be open with each other. That is what I am seeing, you know, in the next five years because I asked Dennis, you know, in the next five years, do you think we can have fun like that still? Mm. When I'm 60, do you think you'll be jiving at me? You'll be, you know, you'll be making fun of me like this the same way? That's our hope lah that we will still maintain this little bit of childlikeness yeah. in the marriage. Thank you so much, Shireen, for that. And if I could respond as well, you know, if there are any listeners who uh, might be facing some challenges in your communication mm. or conflict resolution, you know, and it has come to a place where you might find it difficult to move ahead, we want to invite you to visit our website, www.family.org.sg. And we do have marriage coaches who are ready to, you know, avail some support to you and to really be a perhaps an objective listener to guide mm. you along to see what might be potentially some strategies and approaches to take the next step forward in your marriage. Now, Dennis, you mm. have been addressing the husband quite a lot in this sharing. Mm. So today's question from our listener is actually from a man. Okay, so let me pose this question to you, Dennis. My wife is highly analytical and detail-oriented, mm. while I'm more intuitive and prefer big picture thinking. So every time we plan for a holiday, we end up squabbling because she wants everything planned to the finest detail, while I prefer to keep things open and spontaneous. So how can we communicate and work better together? I think this question, right, because both are thinking for the good of the trip, right? But it's just that it's the percentage, how much detail you want it to be and how big the portion you want it to be to be open and spontaneous. So I think this can be discussed and worked out that both can also have a share in this planning. Well, the wife can plan everything in detail, Probably the husband can ask for pockets, you know, whereby during the trip is there one or two pockets that we can leave it open so that we can do things that are spontaneous mm. or instantaneous while at the trip there's something that is fun, etc. I think if we are going for the trip, this should be fun, right? It should look forward for the good and to enjoy the trip. So I think it can be communicated. Well, I feel that definitely you need to have some plan. Yeah. <laughs> If not, you'll get lost yeah. and uh, you will waste your time also. So balance, there must be a balance. And that's why two is better than one again. You know, the husband being more spontaneous will add in the fun element and the wife must be open to be fun. Ah. So you, you need to understand your, your own personality also. If you know that you are the more uptight one, you need things in order and you know that this can rub off in quite a harsh manner to your partner, then you need to make the decision to manage yourself. You know, if you major on the major and you minor on the minor and uh, don't be so hard up on things. If husband says, you know, he wants to take the day off and just chill at a cafe, then okay lah. You know, you got 80% of your planning fulfilled. Why not yeah. 20% go cafe, mm -hmm. right? So I think we need to be self-aware also. Where are our possible points where we would trip and be harsh to our partner and manage ourselves? Yeah, and I think it's very like similar, right, to our entire journey of life where there mm. will be unpredictability, mm. things that occur out of nowhere and that happens on trips. We all know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah so then having that leeway for some flexibility um, would also reduce the points of tension you know, yeah. when you're traveling. Yeah, and instead of planning to the T, there can be some level of structure, but understanding that ultimately we want to enjoy each other's company, yeah. create memories together, and that is the ultimate goal. And then from there, we can sort of like, yeah, as all your suggestions come into place to plan together collectively. I'm really appreciative of you, Dennis and Shireen, for sharing with us so candidly, shedding light on how you have learned to manage your differences in your marriage. And as we wrap up our conversation today, I just want to share with you that I'm really personally encouraged by how both of you have considered one another's well-being and being so respectful to one another in all that you say and do to each other. Yeah, so thank you so much for that, for sharing your lives with us. And I want to celebrate together with you that you're going to commemorate your second wedding anniversary soon. And I thought that it would be really apt for you to express some words of appreciation to one another and perhaps even share a hope that you have for your marriage in the coming year. 
like Suyin has shared that after we got married, I uh, went through an operation and I really want to say that I really appreciate her. The many months that she took care of me, you know, for me, prepared the chicken essence for me. And I think through this, I really experienced love. I want to take this opportunity to say, you know, thank you so much. Because uh, you have made the whole recuperating journey much easier and you are always there for me. So I want to say thank you. Love you. Aww. <laughs> yep. I feel that Dennis has added a big dimension to my life. So I really want to thank you for adding so much to my life. So much colour. You know, there, there are times where we have arguments. But in that, I got to know myself a lot also. So you are like a mirror to me. And I'm very appreciative that you love me. I think that's the first thing, that you love me for who I am and you're patient with me and you are willing to adjust because I am a serious person. <laughs> And for all the injection of fun and silly jokes, yeah, it's, it's nothing that I cannot ask for more. I can only pray that we have so many, 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 many more years together, mm. having fun together and really making an impact in this world, I don't think I would be able to do it with anyone else other than you. I believe that is encouragement to our listeners as well to learn how to appreciate our mm. spouse Yeah, because that is truly a gift in our marriage. So today's couple challenge for you listeners is for you to plan an event or maybe an activity for one another Think about what your spouse really likes or perhaps dislikes and then from there, learn how to organize something that could show some level of appreciation to your spouse. So we hope this episode has given you some ideas as to how you can better appreciate and cherish your better half. And if you're looking out for more resources to grow your relationship and marriage, do visit our website or browse our articles to check out our upcoming events. And we hope that you have by now subscribed to our Connect2 podcast or follow us on Facebook or Instagram and share this episode with a friend who may benefit from it. So thank you for tuning in. Until next time, take care of yourself and your spouse.